بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم A is an n by n Hermitian matrix because A is Hermitian its eigenvalues are real valued suppose that the eigenvalues are arranged in this descending order lambda 1 is the maximum eigenvalue lambda n is the minimum eigenvalue the associated eigenvectors are q1 q2 all the way to qn any two distinct eigenvectors are orthogonal and the L2 norm of each one of them is unity. We are interested in this optimization problem. For each V-dimensional subspace of the N-dimensional complex space, we obtain the minimum of this quadratic form, X Hermitian AX, over all vectors X in the subspace S with unity L2 norm. Alpha is the maximum of the minima. So what is the solution to this optimization problem? Now, what if we study a specific subspace, a specific v-dimensional subspace? Specifically, consider the subspace which is the span of the eigenvectors q1, q2 to qv. So we fix the subspace. Because we will fix the subspace, then alpha is greater than or equal to the minimum of x Hermitian ax vector x has a unity l2 norm and x is in this v-dimensional subspace x is an element of the span of those eigenvectors from q1 to qv alpha is greater than or equal to this minimum because alpha is the maximum of the minima here we are fixing the subspace. Now we have a simpler optimization problem. Minimum of the quadratic form X Hermitian AX. Vector X is normalized and it is in this span. This means that X is a linear combination of those vectors. Now, what is X Hermitian X? X Hermitian X is summation M from one to V, eta M, Q M, Hermitian. So this is X Hermitian, and X is summation G from one to V, eta J, Q J. Now, if we apply the Hermitian and do the multiplication, we get this double sum, summation M from one to V, summation G from one to V, eta M conjugate. So this complex coefficient, it gets conjugated. Then we have eta J, and then we have Q M Hermitian, Q J. Due to the orthogonality of the eigenvectors, this double sum can be simplified as summation m from 1 to v. This is 0 so long as m is different from j. The only surviving terms are when m is equal to j, equal to 1, 2, all the way to v. So this double sum is, in fact, equal to summation m from 1 to v, eta m conjugate eta m, that's the magnitude of eta m squared, and then qm Hermitian qm, that's the L2 norm squared of the vector qm, that's unity. So this is X Hermitian X. We want X Hermitian X to be one. So the sum of those guys must be equal to one. What about the objective function? The quadratic form itself, X Hermitian AX. It is exactly like this, but between these two sums, we have matrix A. So this will be summation M from one to V, eta M conjugate QM Hermitian. This is X Hermitian. And then we have A multiplied by this sum. So this is summation G from one to V, eta J, A, Q, J. Now, QJ is an eigenvector of matrix A. So AQJ is equal to lambda J QJ. Now, if we do X Hermitian AX, we have a double sum, summation M from 1 to V, summation J from 1 to V, eta M conjugate, eta J, and then we have lambda J now, and then QM Hermitian QJ. This is zero when M and J are different, and this is one when M and J are equal. And so this is a single sum, M from 1 to V, and then we have eta m conjugate eta m. This is the magnitude of eta m squared. And we have lambda m. Our problem becomes minimize x Hermitian ax, which is summation m from 1 to v, eta m squared lambda m, subject to the constraint that the summation m from 1 to v, eta m squared is unity. The objective function here is magnitude eta 1 squared lambda 1 plus magnitude eta 2 squared lambda 2 and we have magnitude eta v squared lambda v. This is to be minimized. Recall that the eigenvalues are arranged. 
lambda 1 greater than or equal to lambda 2 greater than or equal to lambda v. Moreover, those real valued non-negative quantities, they have a sum of unity. So to be able to minimize this summation here, which is the quadratic form x Hermitian ax, we must choose eta v to be equal to 1. And the other eta's should be set equal to 0 so that we can get the minimum possible value of this summation, which is eta v itself. So choose eta v to be equal to 1 and eta 1 to eta v minus 1. This is equal to 0. In this case, the minimum is lambda v. Let's summarize what we have done. We have a maximum problem. We said, let's suppose that we will not sweep through all possible v-dimensional subspaces of the n-dimensional complex space. Let's just fix a particular subspace. If we do this, we are obtaining a lower bound on alpha. We will choose the subspace, which is the span of the eigenvectors q1 to qv. Alpha is greater than or equal to the minimum of the quadratic form x Hermitian ax for a vector x with unity L to norm and x in this subspace. Since x is in the span of those vectors, x can be written as a linear combination of those vectors. And the problem now becomes, what are those coefficients? Because x, vector x, has unity L to norm, then those guys, if we take their magnitude squares and sum, we should get 1. The quadratic form itself can also be written in terms of those coefficients and the eigenvalues of matrix A from lambda 1 to lambda V. Now we have a simpler optimization problem. We need to minimize the sum. What is the smallest among these eigenvalues? Lambda V. So to obtain the minimum possible value for this sum, we focus on lambda V. We make this equal to 1, and the other coefficients are set to 0. And the minimum possible value is lambda V. Now that's a lower bound on alpha. So we have our first conclusion, which is that alpha is greater than or equal to the vth eigenvalue of matrix A. Let's rewrite our problem. Alpha is the maximum over subspaces that are v-dimensional. And then we have the minimum of the quadratic form x Hermitian ax. L to normal x is unity, and x is in this v-dimensional subspace S. Suppose that S1 is the optimal subspace. So it is the subspace that contains the maximum of the minima of x Hermitian ax. So for every d-dimensional subspace, we minimize this quadratic form. Subspace S1 contains the maximum of the minima. In this subspace, the quadratic form is minimized, and this will yield alpha. So alpha is upper bounded by x Hermitian ax for every x that resides in this subspace S1. And of course, the L to norm of x is equal to 1. So that's an upper bound on alpha. Now consider another subspace. Consider the subspace. And here, this is not necessarily p-dimensional. So we'll take the subspace, let's call it big gamma. This is the span of the eigenvectors qv, qv plus 1 to qn. Suppose that x lives in this subspace. For an x that is in big gamma, x can be written as a linear combination of those eigenvectors. So x is summation L from V to N, epsilon L, QL. Those are the coefficients, and those are the eigenvectors. As we did previously, the L to norm squared of x is x Hermitian x, and like what we did above, this will give us summation L equal V to N, and then we have the magnitude squares of those guys. This should be equal to 1. And for the quadratic form, again, we'll take this guy, take its Hermitian. So the coefficients are conjugated, and then we have, we convert th those column vectors into row vectors and take the complex conjugate. Then we have summation, j from v to n, epsilon j. Then we have the matrix A, A multiplied by qj. As we did above, this is an eigenvector of matrix A, so this is lambda j times qj, and then we multiply and exploit the fact that if L and J are different from one another, the inner product is equal to zero. And if L is equal to J, the inner product is equal to unity. This gives us summation L equal V to N, epsilon L magnitude squared times lambda L. So that's the quadratic form. If we choose a vector X 
in this subspace big gamma. This summation is equal to a weighted sum of the eigenvalues lambda v, lambda v plus one, all the way to lambda n. This summation has a maximum possible value, lambda v, and this is achieved by making epsilon v equal to unity and the other coefficients are set to zero. So if x is in the subspace big gamma, the quadratic form x Hermitian ax is less than or equal to lambda v. What is the dimension of subspace big gamma? Big gamma is the span of n minus v plus one vectors. So the dimension of gamma is n plus one minus v. Now dimension of gamma plus dimension of S1, we call S1 is the optimal subspace. It is the subspace containing the maximum of the minima. It's a bidimensional. So this dimension of big gamma is n plus one minus v. S1 is v-dimensional. So the sum of the two dimensions is n plus one, which is greater than n. This means that S1 intersection gamma is non-trivial because the sum of the dimensions is greater than the dimension of the n-dimensional complex space. This is non-trivial. Okay, so this contains vectors other than the all zero vector. Take normalized vector x in this intersection. Now, lambda v is greater than or equal to x Hermitian ax because for every x in big gamma, x Hermitian ax is less than or equal to lambda v. Now, the quadratic form itself for every vector x in S1, the optimal subspace is greater than or equal to alpha. Since we have x in the intersection of gamma and S1, then this quadratic form is greater than or equal to alpha. So we have now this inequality that lambda v is greater than or equal to alpha. Together with alpha greater than or equal to lambda v, and alpha is equal to lambda v. The solution to our maximum optimization problem is that alpha is the vth largest eigenvalue of Hermitian matrix A. Now we have this result. Following a similar method of proof, we can show that lambda v, the vth largest eigenvalue of Hermitian matrix A, can be written as the solution to this minimax optimization problem over each subspace of the n-dimensional complex space with dimension n plus one minus v, if we obtain the maximum of the quadratic form over the vectors in the subspace with unity L to norm, then lambda v will be the minimum of those maxima. Finally, we can use the same maximum and minimax characterizations of the eigenvalues and apply them to the singular values of a general matrix A of size n by L. So A has singular values. Let's assume they are in descending order, sigma one greater than or equal to sigma two, all the way to sigma R. And R is the rank of matrix A, which is less than or equal to the minimum of n and l. So the vth singular value is the solution to this optimization problem. So for each v-dimensional subspace, we obtain the minimum of this l to norm. The optimization variable is x, it's a vector that is l-dimensional, it has unity l to norm and is in the v-dimensional subspace s. And then sigma v is the maximum of the minimum. Why are we using this l to norm? This is because the L to norm is the square root of the Hermitian AX Hermitian times AX. So this is the square root of X Hermitian A Hermitian AX. Here we have a quadratic form, X Hermitian A Hermitian AX. So the solution to this optimization problem will give us the positive square roots of the eigenvalues of the matrix A Hermitian A. And A Hermitian A is of course a square Hermitian positive semi-definite matrix. And those are indeed the singular values of matrix A we can alternatively use this optimization problem. So over all L minus V plus one dimensional subspaces of the L dimensional complex space, we can maximize this L2 norm using vectors in the subspace with unity L1 norm. Sigma V will be the minimum of the maximum. 